Ms. Rand, could you define for us the word monopoly in the way that you've used it? Uh, monopoly, in the strict sense of the word, means exclusive uh, privilege to act in a certain capacity or to deal with a certain product. In the strict sense of the word, every one of us holds a monopoly on his own work. Uh, but this is not the sense in which it is used in politics and economics. Monopoly is usually taken to mean a coercive monopoly, which means uh, the exclusive right to uh, a certain field of activity from which all competitors and all future entrants are barred. Now, no private enterprise, no free market can establish a coercive monopoly because it is precisely the freedom of the market that would break it up. In the 19th century, attempts were made to corner the market in various commodities, and invariably they ended with the failure and the bankruptcy of the man who had attempted to establish a private monopoly. A coercive monopoly can be established only by law, that is, by means of a special government privilege uh, granted to one producer or one company and barring all others from that particular activity. For instance, the public utilities are a classic example of a coercive monopoly in the sense that no one, no competitor can enter that field. He is forbidden to do so by law. That is a coercive monopoly. And all the evils popularly associated with monopolies are, of course, uh, due to the activities of coercive monopolies of that kind. But if you look into their history, both here and in Europe, you will find that there has never been a coercive monopoly, that is, a monopoly which closes the field to competitors that had been created by uh, collusion uh, or conspiracy of free enterprises on a free market. It has always been created by an act of government. Ms. Rand, if coercive monopolies are created by acts of government, how do you interpret the fact that government then turns around and passes anti-monopoly laws? What are these laws directed against, since the government uh, is the thing that's creating the course of monopoly? It is uh, directed against the ablest and the most successful members of industry. You're speaking, of course, of the antitrust laws. Uh, the antitrust laws are the instrument of government control and coercion over all business. They are, as every lawyer knows, a mixed, undefined, undefinable mess of contradictions, which is in such a state that every businessman in the country can be prosecuted as a criminal at any moment at the discretion of the government because he breaks some law or another the moment he goes into business. Laws which are contradictory so that if he complies with one law, he simultaneously breaks another. Uh, what the antitrust laws have done is to grant the government an arbitrary power to crack down on any industrialist and you have certainly seen the last two administrations today using that power not for purposes of protecting competition which is a contradiction in terms but for purposes of coercion and compulsion on general control of business politically quite uh, unrelated to the issue of competition. I want to stress that a competition, a free competition, enforced by law is certainly a contradiction in terms. The only protection of competition is a free market without any controls whatever. When government controls enter, they work to the advantage, again, of any in, uh, enterpriser or industrialist with government pool. Any man who cannot make it on the free market or who cannot compete on merit runs to the government and invokes the antitrust law against his abler and more successful competitors. So that the net result of the antitrust laws has been only the protection of mediocrity and the destruction of ability and success.